Here I have the Enduro Flow series ultrasonic flow meter from Spire Meter and Technology. Uh, you probably know this as the EF10. And here, today I'm going to show you how to get started with it. So here I have the standard packing list. We have the main body. We have your clamps for your transducers. We have the transducers which go on the pipe. These are the TM1 model. We have your silicone couplant and your wall mounting kit and an allen key. Uh, you would use the allen key to open it, but today I've already opened it for you, so here you can see the uh, what it looks like once you've opened it on the main window. The first step we need to do is to initialize the main body and set up the parameters. So as you can see we have a keypad here and how this works is you press the orange button with the M for the menu. So say I wanted to go to menu 1. You press M, you press 1, and then you press enter. And here you are at uh, menu 1. But first we need to go to menu 61. Menu 61. We need to check and make sure we have the correct version, the correct serial number, and the correct model, the EF10. Next, we go to menu 30. Uh, and to set the measurement unit, it's already in English, which is the factory standard, but if you wanted to change that, you would just press enter, scroll down or up to change between English and metric. Press enter. Next, we go to menu 31, menu 31, to set the flow rate uh, unit, which is already in gallons per minute here. And then we go to menu 39. Set the language, it's ready in English. Next, we go to menu 40. To set the damping, you can do 10 seconds or 20 seconds, both are fine. This basically um, takes the average of the flow over this amount of time, so it's, it's fine between 10 and 20. Next, we go to menu 41. This is a low cutoff valve. Uh, we already calibrate them to the factory standard here so you don't need to worry about that. Now we go to menu 11 and this is the part where we set up the pipe parameters. Uh, menu 11 is the pipe outer diameter. Make sure you know this. So today we're going to be using 2.375 inches and say we were using 5 you just press enter 5 say it was 5.6 6 enter but we're using 2.375. Next, we go to menu 12 to set the pipe thickness. 0.154. Uh, next is menu 13. You can scroll between menus by up and down here, by the way, by these arrows. So the pipe, this is menu 13, the inner diameter is automatically calculated based on your outer diameter and your wall thickness. So you don't actually need to enter anything here. Next. We go to menu 14 to set the material. We're going to be using PVC today, but uh, we have quite a few selections here. So as you can see, we press PVC. Next, menu 16 is to set the liner material. If you have any liner, you would uh, set it, but we are not using any liner today. Menu, tw menu 20 is a fluid type. We're using water. Uh, Next, we go to menu 23 to set your transducer type. We're going to be using the uh, clamp-on TM1s today, right here. So, and then next, you go to menu 24 to set your mounting method. I'll talk more about this later, but generally you would just use V method. Uh, you could also use the method, but that's for much bigger pipes. Maybe if it had a 10 inch diameter or something like that. And then go to menu 25. This tells you how far apart your transducers can, should, are supposed to be. Um, but you always, a lot of the times, you end up having to adjust the transducers. Um, I'll talk more about that later, too. And then you go to menu 26. And you save the parameters. So menu 26, press enter, solidify setting, enter, and it's saved.
So now what we're going to do is put the transducers onto the pipe. So here I have the TM1s. Um, to mount your transducers, you should know which direction your water is flowing. For us, the water is flowing in this direction towards the pipe. So we want the one that's labeled upstream here to be pointed like this towards the flow of the water, in, this, in the same direction the flow of the water, like this. One's downstream is like this, in the other direction. Uh, we're going to be using the V-mounting method, so they'll be pointing towards each other, like this on the pipe. The upstream, remember, water flowing this way, upstream pointing this way. If you were to use the Z-mounting method, we put them on like this, like this right here. Um, now, if you mount them on the top, sometimes bubbles get trapped on the top and it screws up the signal. So you could also mount it on the side. If you're having some problems, this, this might help fix it. And now the transducer's on. What you would do is you would take your silicone, put some on here, and then mount it on. But this is permanent, so we're not going to be using this. We already have some grease. Uh, which we use here at SpireMT uh, to do the testing and everything. And before you put your transducers on, you have to make sure that on your pipe there's no paint, there's no rust. Uh, clean your pipe off. And to mount them on, you would use your clamp. The basic idea, put your transducer on. Have your clamp like this. Up is to let it through press it down to lock it. So have this up, push this through, and then remember righty tidy. So to tighten it. And then if you wanted to take it off, you would just to the left, pull this up, take it out. Okay. Don't mount your transducers too tightly because later on we're going to have to adjust the distance between them to make sure all of our parameters are correct and the measurements will be correct. So when you first mount it on, don't make sure it's not a permanent uh, fix because you might have to adjust them later. Now that we've mounted both of our transducers on, we're ready to verify a uh, signal um, to make sure that the measurements are as accurate as possible. Now we're just going to turn the pipe. Now that we've mounted our transducers on and we have the water flowing, we're ready to check the strength and quality of our signal. So to check the strength and quality, we go to menu 90. Now this is the up, the strength for the upstream. This is the strength for the downstream. Both of these values should be between be between 60 and 99. So as we see, they're fine at 80, 83. The quality should be between 60 and 99. Also, so this value is fine. Now we go to menu 91. Now here, you just need to know that the value of this number should be between 97 and 103 and we want it to be as close to 100 as possible so at 118 it's way too high which means we need to adjust the spacing between our transducers to uh, change the value here because the value we had on menu 91 was too high what that means is we need to move our transducers closer to each other now if your value is too low then that means your transducers are too close and you need to move them farther apart so here we're just going to move them a little closer and basically you just keep adjusting them until it's as close to 100 as possible. Now that we have the value as close to 100 as possible, you can go ahead and check your flow, uh, menu 0, 1, and make sure that the flow is not negative. Uh, the flow should be positive if you have the upstream um, pointing in the direction of the flow and the downstream pointing against the direction of the flow. Uh, if the flow is negative, that just means you need to swap the transducers. So now we're going to have a shot showing you the comparison between the flow rate on our flow meter and the flow rate shown on the 
standard mag meter and as you can see the difference is always within one percent so our flow meter is extremely accurate so now we're going to talk about how to set up your relay output right now i'm on menu 79 menu 79 and right now the relay is disabled so what the relay does is basically it records a certain amount of uh, water whatever unit or uh, flow that goes through uh, whether you want it to be in gallons or cubic meters and then after a certain constant amount there will be a click so you know that that much has gone through so right now on many 79 we're gonna press enter we're gonna go to 9 which is the positive uh, pulse here right here and then we're gonna go to menu 33 so here you're gonna set up the amount that you want to go through um, basically if it's one it'll be one times whatever unit you set it to be if it's 0.1 it'll be 0.1 times whatever unit you set it to be so if the unit you set it as is gallons every 0.1 gallons it'll click once uh, if set it as one every one gallon it'll click once set it as 10 every 10 gallons it'll click once so press enter to change the units for the totalizer you go to menu 32 and here you can just change it uh, whatever you need so I'm gonna stick with a gallon and uh, as you can hear there's gonna be a click uh, every gallon which is the way I set it up you can go to menu 33 every one gallon there will be a click and the screen will flash really quickly to keep track of how much flow has gone through you just go to menu 00, zero and it's going to show you the net flow as you can see it increases and the unit right now is gallons uh, if you wanted to change the unit you just go to menu 32 change the unit go to menu 37 if you want to reset the totalizer now we're going to talk about how to set up the 420 milliamp now here I'm at menu 55 and I've already selected the CL mode of 420 milliamp. Uh, you can change that to whatever is necessary, but we're just going to use the 420 milliamp. Um, next, you go to menu 56, and here you're going to select set the flow rate slash energy value corresponding to the 4 milliamp current. So let's just say it was like 2.5 okay next you go to menu 57 and here you set the flow rate or energy value corresponding to the 20 milliamp current okay once you've selected the values that you need you go to menu 59 and here it's going to show you the current output of the flow so now we're going to talk about how to manually test the 420 milliamp and make sure it's functioning correctly right now I'm at menu 58 and we can scroll through to display different values um, of the milliamp and what we're gonna try to do is to match the values on the screen to the values that are going to be shown on this multimeter to set up your multimeter make sure the red lead is plugged into the milliamp the black lead is plugged into the comp. Make sure your dial is dialed to milliamp and make sure the mode that you have here is milliamp DC. So make sure the red lead or the positive one is plugged onto the AO minus and the black lead or the negative is on the DC minus. Uh, the AO minus and DC minus will be shown down here and basically what you want is whatever value you're going to put up here should be the same as your multimeter. Now that you have the leads in the correct place, you can scroll through with the up and down buttons to change whatever value you're going to be checking. Say you want to check 20, it should more or less be the same value. Just going to go through it. Uh,
and if they're all pretty much the same value all the way through, then it's functioning correctly. Thank you for joining us today at Spiral Meridian Technology. Uh, we hope this video was helpful in getting you started with the EF10. And please remember to check out our website at spiremt.com.